<laughs> there you go. Okay, here we are, folks. All right. Welcome to the CNET stage here at CES 2012. I'm Brian Cooley, and of course, we are in the midst of really just kicking off CES 2012, if you're catching us live right now. Uh, you know my particular specialty and passion within this wide world of technology that we cover, uh, many avenues of it, but I get into the cars, love the car tech, and joining me now is one of the guys who will absolutely vibe with me on that one. <laughs> Please welcome Paul Mascarenas, Ford's Chief Technology Officer. Paul, thanks, Brian. Thanks Good for being to be here. with you. Good to have you here. Yeah. Now, when you were here a year ago at the last CES, you were freshly minted as the CTO at Ford. I was. I'm one year into the job now. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. I'm back Happy again. Happy birthday. Back again. Happy yeah. anniversary. Yeah. Good to have you here. Thanks. Now, uh, the, the phrase you coined last year is one mm. that resonated in a lot of people's minds. I've been using it and or butchering it ever <laughs> since. I kind of half stole it from you. You said what about the car? I said the car is the ultimate mobile device. And it's so true. And you like that, yeah. We're it, looking it at absolutely is. CES in could sense. in the future be called maybe the car electronic show because yep. we've got such a huge presence of automakers here. Ford, of course, one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. Alan Mulally giving the keynote again this year. Catch me up on what you guys have announced. I think you've had more announcements this year on the tech front at CES than any of your previous couple of years that you've been here. Yeah, Where do we start? So, so it's a great show for us. Firstly, as you say, Alan, Alan Mulally is uh, actually flying in later today. Because uh, we had the Detroit um, North American International Auto yeah, Show so going we're, on. In, we're in kind of juggling calendars at the moment. Right but, on uh, top of this show, which normally doesn't happen. Someone yeah, has so it in for us. Alan will be flying in. He'll be participating in a vehicle reveal this afternoon, our Fusion Energy, uh, which is a plug-in hybrid. Okay, the plug-in uh, hybrid Fusion. Yeah, I'm continuing the reveal that we had at Detroit yesterday. And then tomorrow... Does be that mean you pulled it halfway back at Detroit and the rest of the curtain comes no, off today? No, no, no. We're <laughs> going to show it to the tech community today. We the folks who really get it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right, right. Um, and then tomorrow he'll be participating in the um, keynote panel, uh, CEO keynote panel with yes. Gary Shapiro and co. But what we're talking about here are really uh, three or four uh, key areas. The first is we're showing for the first time in North America our EVOS concept car, um, which if you haven't seen, it's an absolutely beautiful car. Um, it's a concept in terms of design, showing our future design language for our global products. And actually, when you look at the Fusion production car mm -hmm. and the EVOS concept, you're going to see a lot of similarities. A lot of similar looks. And it's amazing so how much came across from uh, that prototype concept in, vehicle. Into the production vehicle. So that gives you an idea of where we're taking our design globally. But the fascinating um, thing about the EVOS is that it's got almost a, almost a pulse with the driver as you envision it, very much yeah. interpretive of what the driver is doing, the condition they're in, even some, some health status interpretation, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, so it's about the design, the powertrain, plug-in hybrid, so again that energy technology, exactly the same technology that we'll be showing on the Fusion production car okay. and talking about this afternoon. But in terms of the technology, it's really about this experience that we talked about last year applying technology in the vehicle in a relevant way to create an ownership experience for our customers. Now what do you mean by ownership? Because ownership means you know, one thing traditionally in cars. It means you know, getting the keys and paying off the note. But you're re redefining uh, that term, right? Yeah, I mean, there's the rational ownership experience, which is about the quality. We consistently deliver high-quality vehicles, affordable, value for our customers, dependable over their lifetime. That's the very rational side of it, great fuel economy and so on but making this emotional connection. You know, okay, that's the ownership. And, and it's this, what I describe as a seamless experience between the home, the office, and the vehicle. So whether you're listening to music, you might be listening to internet radio mm -hmm. in the house. As you move into the vehicle, our vision is that by connecting the vehicle, you can continue to enjoy that same seamless experience. Whether it's apps that you're using, apps that you would normally be running on a mobile device, your smartphone, tablet or whatever, now through AppLink you can access those in the vehicle. Yeah, and again, you guys were pretty early on that with Pandora, yep. OpenBeak, uh, one or two others. I know you're, at, you're announcing a couple additional yeah, apps some, the show. some new ones this, this week, uh, NPR, Roximity, iHeartRadio. Um, what is Roximity? So again, I don't know that one. Roximity is a really interesting one. It's actually um, context-based information. So knowing the destination of the vehicle, knowing where you are when you're driving. So if you're passing a shopping mall, you might get access to shopping information. Are you looking for a restaurant? That type of thing. Okay, so, so, it's, so it's proximity and, based. And this is exactly where we're moving now, is providing more of this contextual information to the driver. So it's not just bombarding you with information. Mm -hmm. It's actually providing you with the information that you might need when you need it. 
based on the location of the vehicle. That's an interesting so. way to attack distraction, I think, mm -hmm. which I'm sure you agree is starting to bubble up as Absolutely. a topic at Absolutely. the regulatory layer. Yep. What did you think of the NTSB recommendation? Well, that we, phones go away from cars. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we talked about distraction even when we were here last year. Yeah. And if you remember, along with the ultimate mobile device, I talked about keeping your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road and the sync technology that we're putting in with the voice commands and so on. Being part of this solution to people wanting to use their mobile devices, but in a vehicle, mm -hmm. and us wanting to enable our drivers to continue to concentrate on this primary task of, of driving. Um, There's no traction NTSC for a wide-out ban, is there? I, you know, I think our view is, and we absolutely support the ban on handheld texting. You know, we're putting the technology in because we think it's bad for people to be using handheld devices while they're driving. Right. Our view is that you can legislate, but that's not going to solve the problem because people are still going to want to use their devices in the vehicle. So we'll continue to develop our in-vehicle technologies to allow the safest experience that we can. And we, we believe the safest experience is this seamless connectivity, make it really mm -hmm. simple, make it really intuitive to connect, and then provide an HMI, a human machine interface, an interaction yeah. with the device that is as much as possible enabled through voice. The key part, I think, is the first part you said, because mm -hmm. a lot of folks get the voice part. Right. Keep your eyes and hands where yep. they should be, and hopefully not subdivide your mind too yep. much. But the part about continuity, where the car can pick up where I left off, there's less sort of overhead of me saying, okay, let me rethink what I'm doing when I'm in the car, because the car is still somewhat of a digital island. Exactly. You do different behaviors in the car with media and communication, but if that was not the case, if it followed you more from your other places in your life, mm -hmm. there's less distraction to saying, okay, where am I? Let me get oriented, because most of us do that while we're already up and running. No, you're absolutely right, and you're, you're hitting on the, the point that I mentioned. It's, it's all about this familiarity, this intuitiveness, yeah. and as much as we can make it seamless, you, know, you can really then continue to focus on driving. Now, on the other side, I don't want to get too lost in the driver distraction issue because, as I say, we're putting the technology in. But on the other side, we're also putting in a lot of vehicle technologies, vehicle-centric technologies, that actually help the driver. Uh, for example, with the Focus launch last year, with the Fusion launch right now, you know, we're launching technologies, active cruise control, forward uh -huh. collision warning, mitigation by braking, lane departure warning, uh, the Fusion vehicle has a lane-keeping assist feature. Yeah, you've so pushed again, this down to a low price point. And, and, you know, I talked last time as well about the democratization of technology. Mm -hmm. So we're not, not offering these technologies to, you know, low-volume niche customers. We're making them very affordable, very relevant, and available to millions of customers around the world, continuing to focus on the pillars that we've defined of high-quality vehicles that are safe, through the technologies that we put on board, deliver the best or amongst the best fuel economy, yeah. high efficiency gasoline engines, EcoBoost, plug-in hybrids and so on, um, and also smart features and technologies, and just continuing to focus on those elements. One side of the technology seems to be answering for the weaknesses in the mm -hmm. other, whether it's distraction or whether it's inefficiency. We know that the human driver left to their own devices drives typically inefficiently, right? Mm -hmm. Lots of um, High, high change driving modes, a lot yeah. of braking, a lot of acceleration, bad mm -hmm. stuff. Both of those dynamics yeah. are bad, right? Self or somewhat autonomous driving systems will start to moderate out bad driver behavior soon, mm -hmm. right? We're not too far from that. Not too far from that, and we're also putting in some um, driver assist features. So, for example, in our uh, current hybrids, we have the Fusion Hybrid, for example. Yeah. We have the little system where you can grow leaves. Grow the leaves, so right. So you can look at your driving style. We have in the... Focus That's electric, we've got to be busy give people a the, video game they want to yeah, win at, you know, to get the, what we want out of them, right? The, the butterfly feature and so on. So, <laughs> yeah. again, putting things in that actually, it's a little bit of fun. It's not distracting, but it's yeah. encouraging this efficient driving style. Um, there is a, uh, a thought out there that the autonomous car is closer than we think. There's a lot of this bubbling mm -hmm. up. No one's ready to put a stake in the ground on right. when they're going to deliver an autonomous car. What is... What's in the way of autonomous cars, self-driving cars? Are we going to get there with one sort of a big jump, or is there going to be a very gradual continuum as we move some kind of self-driving uh, in the market? What do you say? It's, it's a great question. My, my view is um, it's somewhere in the future. Um, I haven't got a crystal ball myself, so I can't. How does 10 I years grab you in like. general? Crazy, I, I maybe? No, I think crazy for full autonomous. Um, 
continuing to see a progression of semi-autonomous vehicles that are moving towards it. And uh -huh. When we talk about these technologies, I don't think people always relate to what's in our vehicles today. So, for example, things like active cruise control that are just managing speed it's and distance. It's a big piece of autonomy. It's just sitting there. Well, we have the uh, auto park assist feature, you know, which allows you to mm -hmm. parallel park your vehicle on the Fusion. We have a pull-out feature that actually allow, helps the driver to pull out. Oh, of I haven't tried that before. Space. So oh, that's interesting. Is that new? Are, these are all, yeah, this okay. is new. And these are autonomous features. The self-parking, i got to say, the self-parking yeah. in an affordable car as you've rolled it out yeah. is, it's the best I've driven. I've driven yeah. a lot of self-parking technologies in cars that are s up to six figures yeah. that can't quite get the nose in. Yeah. <laughs> and no, right. and a, a $20,000 Ford can do it over and over and over. So I give you kudos on yeah. that. So but as we look at these, what I call perimeter technologies, mm -hmm. lane departure, right. um, forward collision mm -hmm. prevention, active parking, all the things that work around the sensors, around the outside of the car, mm -hmm. Are we at the point where we can start to just roll out more software that turns those physical devices into what we need for autonomy? Or is there some additional tangible tech we need to get to autonomous cars? No, what we're um, very focused on is we've got the hardware in the vehicle. So we've got radar sensing, we've got camera sensing, we've got electric power steering that gives you control right, over the steering. Right, that's a key part. Um, these, these are what we call the fundamental building blocks. The smart thing, the innovative thing then, and this is how we make it affordable, is not to build in more hardware, but it's to develop the software algorithms and the control systems. Right. So for example, the auto park assist, no, no, no extra hardware in the vehicle. That's just it's code, right? It's the ultrasonic sensors, it's yeah. the power steer, electric power steering, and a really a smart algorithm. So that's what I think differentiates uh, you know, a smart, innovative company. This starts to put uh, a car company on the Tech innovation cycle of a CE a, company, a right? technology company, and that's what we've been emphasizing. Yeah. Now, if you talk about full autonomous vehicles, mm -hmm. lots more hardware, and a long, okay. long way to make it affordable. Okay. Uh, you're talking about some very, very expensive e e kit. And a lot of that car-to-car -car communication thing is exactly. really green right now. That's yeah, and car-to-car -car communication, I think we can talk about um, in a different context, because that's using Wi-Fi, yeah. short-range Wi-Fi, um, DSRC, dedicated short-range communications, mm -hmm. Very affordable, very practical. Uh, a lot of big pilots around, um, you know, not just the country. We've got a, a big program up in uh, Michigan in Ann Arbor, uh, but in Germany, Japan. So okay. I think that offers real opportunity in the near term. Now, um, speaking of your locations, yeah. let's talk about your newest lab. Mm -hmm. You've come to Silicon Valley. We have. We announced last week that we were opening a, a lab in Silicon Valley. We didn't talk about the exact location, but somewhere in the... Because, you know, I'll be camped Palo, out. That's Palo why. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, <laughs> you know, welcome you there with an espresso or something together. <laughs> but, um, no, what that's really about, it's a, it's a natural extension of the work that we've been doing for the last four or five years to really connect not only with our um, more mature tech partners, people like Google and Apple, Microsoft a little bit further up the coast, but the universities, Stanford... Um, but I think most importantly for us, having a presence in this really innovative community. And, yeah. and it's, it's amazing for me. It really is one of the most remarkable, innovative communities in the world. And it's everything from you know, entrepreneurial, innovative individuals, yeah. startups working out of their garages, the kind of tech shop type approach, all the way through to the tech giants like Apple. So we've been working in the Valley area for a long time. Um, what but is we just it? felt it was the right time to establish a a hub for us. Well, especially um, you know, to be closer to those partners and sources and inspirations mm -hmm. and places where you can hire the best people or right. some of the best people out of those universities. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. is this is also part of the faster turn of product and design, right? You've got to be faster, yeah. which means you've got to be closer to where some of the resources are, mm -hmm. I would assume, right? So again, we, you know, we continue to drive down the uh, development cycle for the, the vehicle program, Yeah. but you still measure that in years. You know, right. It's, it's two or three years. Right. What we're trying to mesh here is this consumer electronics cycle that you're measuring in months, you know, six to nine months. Mm -hmm. And a lot of folks don't realize and how different this yeah, still is. And part of the solution for us is like meshing the, the small gear with the big gear, right? The small, right. Uh, small fast turning with the large one. You've got to have an open architecture so that you can introduce the latest technology and keep it up to date. An example I'd give would be my full touch. We talked here about my full touch yep. a year ago. Uh, we're just launching our first major upgrade on MyFullTouch. Uh -huh. Faster, simpler, more functionality. 
but we're doing it purely software based. You're sending out USB drives Free to owners in many cases, customers, right? Sending the USBs out That's to interesting owners, thing. So. What was that experience like? Last question I've got for you. What was that experience like for you guys to go through what was really, uh, wasn't intended that way, mm -hmm. it ended up being a little bit of a beta cycle, right? I mean, software companies, technology companies here are mm -hmm. kind of used to finding out from the field, mm -hmm. need some work here and there. Yep. Uh, was that difficult culturally? for Ford to deal uh, with, to, to get that kind of feedback from the market? Very different for us. Um, really the vision of where we want to be as a tech company. Mm -hmm. The ability to launch industry leading technologies yeah. uh, in a high quality way, robust way, but at oh, yeah. the same time be able to very, very quickly respond to customer feedback, both in terms of the things they really like and then the areas of opportunity for improvement and then get those out quickly to do it efficiently and to do it in a way that is um, obviously free, but not uh, inconvenient to our customers. Free and, and easy. And I think the software-based updates is absolutely a perfect example of the direction we're moving in as a company. Completely. Technology Paul, company. Thanks right? for being here. Good to see you. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks Paul much. Paul Mascarena, CTO of Ford, and looking forward to Ford's announcements uh, through their CEO, Alan Mulally, coming a little bit later here at CES 2012. Uh, in a minute, another live backpack shot here at the floor of CES. You know what that means. BT, Brian Tong is out there somewhere ready to make your jaw drop yet again. Stay tuned. I'm Brian Cooley at CES 2012 with CNET.com, the way forward.